Welcome back to Star Wars Shovelware, my name is Luke and today on the channel we're going to be taking a look at the growing issue of asset flips appearing on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Now if you've been with the channel for a while, you may already know that I publish videos every so often highlighting certain asset flips, but what you may not know is how deep the problem actually runs, and so today that's what we're going to be talking about. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that you'll find my master spreadsheet containing all of the games I've identified down in the description box below, and if you know of any asset flips not yet on the list, you can drop me an email or message on Discord about them, or alternatively, if you find one of your games on the list and don't think it should be there, then you can contact me to dispute it. So I'm going to be breaking this video down into three parts. The first part will be covering off what an asset flip is, or at least what myself and many others deem one to be. In the second part I'll be talking about where I found the games and how I identified the assets used to create them, and in the final part I'll be showing you the results of my findings. I'll also have each of these sections timestamped down below in case you want to skip to one. So without further ado let's get right on to our first topic, and that is, what exactly is an asset flip? Now in order to understand where the term asset flip comes from, it helps if you first have an awareness that developers of games, especially small indie game development teams, often don't have the resources, skill sets or time to develop every aspect of the games, and so there are websites out there which act as sales platforms for assets or resources for a game. These can be anything from tile sets and 3D character models to music, sound effects and even complete game engines, and these are generally designed to ease the burden on developers and save them a lot of time and money in the process. Now alongside these assets, you can also find complete game templates, which are exactly that, a template or blueprint with which to develop your own game with, using them as a foundation to build upon. But here is where asset flippers come in, because more often than not, what these guys do is simply buy the game template, which usually comes with a selection of demo levels, and then they just export the complete project without modifying anything, and then publish it as a game on a digital store, such as the Switch eShop. There's not actually anything illegal about doing this, but the practice is generally frowned upon by most people due to the fact that it requires no creational input, and the companies that do it are just out to make some quick cash by buying the asset and flipping it to turn a profit, hence the term asset flip. Now of course not all asset flips are used game templates, some like Pixar's Urban Street Fighting uses the universal fighting engine with most of the standard character models, plus a couple of random models like this boxer and soccer player from another asset pack, but the concept is still the same, they buy the assets, drop them into a ready made engine and then export the thing and call it a game. An interesting fact about Nintendo is that their preferred platform of choice for indie game developers on the Switch is Unity, and that's why you'll find that most asset flips are produced using Unity assets. So now that you have an understanding of what an asset flip actually is, let's move on to how I found the games for this research, and how I usually identify the assets used to create them. Now as you're probably all very well aware of, the Switch eShop is a bit of a nightmare to navigate, it takes a lifetime to load up the list of games for me and it's generally just not very user friendly, and so instead I use a website called Deku Deals, which is a great little game site if you're searching for deals on games, but it also enabled me to list every single game on the Switch in release date order. I then systematically work my way from the most recent releases all the way back to the start of the year, and we'll get onto why I stopped there shortly. Now as I did this, I didn't do checks on every single game, as there were a lot of games, many of which I had already heard of, but if I thought that one looked a bit shady, I then opened it up in the online eShop to take a look at its screenshots and description, and having been doing this kind of thing for a while now, I've sort of developed a bit of a knack for spotting the kind of telltale signs of shop bought assets and game templates. Many of these games have very simple user interfaces, low quality visuals, or simplified gameplay designed with touchscreens in mind, and this is because a lot of them were originally designed to run on mobile phones. Now whenever I suspect a game of being an asset flip, here is where the real fun starts, as I then have to try and identify which assets have been used, and this is generally done with a combination of Google searches, as well as searching through a bunch of different asset selling sites, which I'll link down below. Depending on how lucky I get, I can sometimes identify the assets right away, which usually happens when the developer hasn't even bothered to change the game's name from the original asset's name, but it can sometimes take well over an hour, and I usually end up having to search keywords based on the type of game it is. 
If there are some unique features in the game, such as a certain character model or unique interface, one great way to identify the asset is actually by using Google Images and comparing the eShop screenshots against them. So now that I've covered off what an asset flip is and how I go about finding them, it's time to look at the results of my research. Now I'll start by clarifying that this is not an extensive list, firstly because I couldn't actually find the assets for some of the games that I suspected of being asset flips, and secondly because I had a huge number of games to work through, and I've no doubt missed a few along the way. As I said before, the data also only goes back to December of last year, and this is because the number of asset flips hitting the store really started to ramp up at the start of 2021, thanks to a few key players. So here are the results of my research. From January this year I managed to find a total of 90 asset flips. The worst month for them appeared to be June with 16 new asset flips published to the Switch eShop and on average from January to August we're looking at about 11 new asset flips per month. Now as expected when it comes to publishers, the number one spot goes to my main man Benoit Verassi over at PixArts, followed closely by Benjamin Kistler and Peter Skalski, who seems to have been slacking a little as of late, considering so far most of the asset flips I've found in 2019 were published by him. Now going off Deku Deal's count of the total number of games released so far in 2021, Asset Flips actually accounted for 7% of these games, which in the grand scheme of things isn't a huge amount, but 90 games is not an insignificant number either, and it still begs the question as to what, if anything, Nintendo were doing to combat this issue. One thing that's even more concerning is the fact that when you look at my spreadsheet, the games that you see highlighted in green are actually duplicate asset flips from several different publishers, and these include things like the three Hammer 2 games, the recent Metal Commando flips, a wooden block puzzle game, and a couple of Checkers and Candy Crush style games. So going by what I've seen, the problem of asset flips on the Switch eShop has gotten worse this past year and it only seems set to continue due to Nintendo lacking any sort of quality control and the fact that they seem totally content with allowing the likes of PixArts and Benjamin Kistler to continue publishing these so-called games to the eShop. So what can we do about it? Well from the looks of things, nothing at the moment. I continue to publish my asset flip warning videos and a few other channels have mentioned in passing about the appearance of a few asset flips, but nobody really seems to be kicking up much of a fuss, and most people are of the mindset just don't buy them then, or aren't actually aware that this is going on. We may one day actually be able to browse the Switch eShop without having to sift through mounds of shovelware and asset flips, but until then I'll keep my spreadsheet updated with any new asset flips I spot, and if you could all share this video to as many people as possible it would really help to spread the word. So hopefully this video opened your eyes a little to the growing issue of asset flips on the Switch eShop. Make sure to hit that like button if you found it useful, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all my latest asset flip warning videos, as well as reviews of actual Nintendo Switch games. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.